Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Terry Fletcher. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Steel City Underground WTF What the Football podcast. It's week three in the NFL, and my name is Terry Fletcher. So let's start with the Carolina Panthers and the Houston Texans. So Carolina beat the Texans 24-9. Nobody was really surprised there. I mean, Carolina's got Christian McCaffrey, and who knows what the Texans have, especially with Tyrod Taylor out, and they're going with a backup to the backup quarterback in Mills. I actually thought it was going to be a heavy running game, So I put in Mark Ingram thinking, oh, I've got this. Yeah, he scored me on my fantasy 2.5 points. Yeah, no, move on. (laughs) Uh, Christian McCaffrey did go out with an injury. It was a very pedestrian game. I actually um, didn't see it live, but when I went back and looked at the highlights, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Not sorry I missed that that game. So Thursday night has got to get better. If they want us to engage in Thursday night, they have got to do better with the the schedule. But right now it's it's really kind kind of interesting what they do. So I think it's good that I've had at least 24 to 48 hours to just reflect and kind of just think about and go back and look at the Steelers game, which it was painful to watch the second time, by the way, and really just figure out, okay, what in the football happened there? So first of all, three penalties in the first six plays. What, I mean, WTF, you know, 25 yards, it cost us right away. The refs call a pick on Claypool that was, in my opinion, a, a BS call. Loss us a first down. They, it was supposed to be what they call a rub play, where he just goes and kind of grazes the guy so that he, he kind of impedes his motion to go towards the, the running back or whoever has the ball. But they said that he actually offensive pass interference in a pick play. So that was a problem. Um, then we had an interception by Joe Burrow to Edmonds and midfield and we could not capitalize and that was that was probably how the game was going to go the entire the entire day you just felt it when we couldn't capitalize on that now i am not one to be negative when it comes to our team i try to be absolutely 100 percent a supporter but our offensive our offensive line is killing us it's absolutely killing us i don't i don't want excuses that they are well i should say they're killing ben but they're not just young. They are, are not on the same page. They're not understanding what it means to block for your quarterback. Um, ben threw an interception, got hit in the elbow, and then they get a touchdown on that turnover. Uh, even the fans, you could hear it on TV. You could hear it from any place you were watching the game. They're booing the Steelers. And that's just, you know, eight eight minutes into the first quarter. But after two series, three penalties, and a net of minus nine yards total on two drives. What the heck, people? This is not going to win games. This is actually going to be a problem as they start looking at flexing games for thinking, do you really want to see this on TV? Another element that contributed significantly to the Steelers' defeat were penalties uh, that piled up more than just those. So 10 for 73 yards, six of those for 51 coming in the first half. And that's when the Bengals built their lead. It was a 14-7 lead while also controlling the game. And you just think the Bengals are controlling the game. Remember when we played them before and our, I think it was Dupree that we had at the time and our edge rushers were just annihilating Burrow. And we saw none of that, just hardly any pressure coming up on the, uh, on their quarterback. And then the Steelers really sabotaged their three offensive pres- uh, possessions with all these penalties and an illegal uh, information penalty turned a second and six into a second and 11 on the first. And then we had a punt, uh, that holding penalty on Kendrick Green. Najee actually ran for a 10 yard run. I'm like, oh, finally. And then we're like, oh, wait, there's a yellow flag. And then again, the offensive pass interference on Claypool which again was a 12 yard completion to Najee. And, um, and then he, uh, we had a punt again. So I, I feel bad for our running back who is actually gaining yards and finding these brief holes and they're co- they're being told to come back. So, and Trey Turner, he's not doing himself any favors. Last week it was for spitting. He got pulled out and disqualified this week, another false start. And he had another um, a penalty in the game as well. But his false start turned a third and eight 
into a third and 13. And that's where where Ben threw his interception, just trying to get something out. But, you know, I, I have to comment on the refs, even though we played a terrible what the football game there. I, just, I don't think I've seen this bad a game since a few years back where we played Philly and it was one of the worst games I've seen in a while. This was one of those games. Um, the 15 yard penalty called on Melvin Ingram. If you go back and look at that roughing the passer uh, penalty. It was no way a penalty, even on the second glance at it, second review of that. And it cost us a touchdown, by the way. Um, it, it was amazing to me that they actually even called that. He led with his shoulder. He didn't get anywhere near the helmet. He didn't even complete the, the whole sack. He basically pulled him to the side, pushed him down, and then walked around the player. So talk about the refs trying to control the, the score of that game. That was just unbelievable. I I just, I can't even believe that they actually um, throw that kind of penalty out there. And I hope that those refs are absolutely going to be taken to task for that. Because what I don't think these referees get is that they're, or maybe they do, who knows, but they're costing jobs. These, these kind of penalties that are uncalled for, they're costing jobs and the, the defenders don't even know what to do now. And actually Ben commented on this one. He said in his post presser that we need some clarifications on the rules because he mentioned the, the clay pull uh, rub, the uh, call on that one for interference and, and also with uh, what happened to um, Ingram. So he's like, we need some clarifications because these aren't making sense to us. And that's the first time I've actually heard Ben actually speak out about that. He will probably get fined for that, but because he did it as post presser, but I would take the fine. I'd be like, you know what, you you know, your refs suck right now. And we don't know what is a, you know, an interference call versus what we're allowed to do. So, you know, our defenders don't know how to um, get after the quarterback without you every single time calling it roughing the passer. Then we had halftime and then opening drive, they score a touchdown and then Ben throws another interception and both of their interceptions or his interceptions turned into touchdowns and ours did not. We did zero. Then the third quarter, we finally get a roughing the passer call. Okay. So Ben was thrown down and are in scoring range again. And I'm not sure what was going on with our wide receivers in this game. They are either running the wrong route or Ben is throwing the wrong route, but nobody is on the same page. And you, you just, it's mind boggling. You're thinking, how are you not ready? Because it, it isn't like our receivers are new. I mean, Chase and Juju and James Washington, our receivers are actually their second year, third year, or even fourth year, and have been playing with Ben. So we're not sure, were they not in the meeting? What happened on that? And then let's just put salt in an open wound. And we go up to make a field goal, and Boz misses a 42-yard field goal, his first miss in Cincinnati. And it's like, I, I just, I don't get it. You know, he has never missed there. And 42, it was, it, it, he just shanked it. So three drops also to end the game with a really, and I, I'm going to say it, and, and I hope this isn't profanity, so Joe, get let this go. A crappy short pass call. When we're fourth and 10, and we get to the, you know, the fourth and goal and we get to the one yard line or we're actually there to be able to understand why you're throwing it a side route and why you're basically trying to do that one except for except for throwing it forward makes no sense to me. I mean, you know, Tomlin's excuse for this and he always says no excuses, but in his post presser, he said we had fired on all we had fired all of our bullets. And that was his rationalization for a fourth down fiasco. And that is just absurd. So, you know, it it seemed like everybody really gave up. And it, it even gets better than that. I mean, Eric Ebron has one catch on seven targets through three games. Why is he being targeted? I mean, retired tight end Vance McDonald has has a catch. You know, it, it just he's it just amazes to me me that we still go to Eric Ebron for anything. And I was excited to have him when he first came, but he has a nonchalant way of not really or looking at least to the optic is that he doesn't care and he plays like he doesn't care. But here's what is really weird about this whole game. Ben threw thirteen times behind the line of scrimmage on Sunday. You seriously don't trust your offensive line that much. You know, Matt Canada, he is up in the booth. 
our offensive coordinator this year, who used to be our, our corners backs coach, he needs to come down. He needs to come down and be on the field. And if he wants to argue with Ben or argue with anybody or whatever, but he needs to see what's going from a field perspective, being up in the booth in a cushy seat and not in the elements, it's not helping. So I'd like to see Matt Canada come down because every time I see them, you know, focus on him upstairs and we're playing terrible, it's like, you know, WTF dude, get down there and and be with your team. So in a Monday media session in Cincinnati, there was a uh, claim from the team and basically they put something out on their feed they basically said no sacks allowed give it up for the o-line this is what they put on their twitter feed okay so the steelers as we know held a 75 regular season game streak of recording at least one sack the longest in nfl history But why would you post that when you've had all kinds of problems yourself and knowing we didn't have TJ Watt, we didn't have Highsmith, and Alu Alu was out? I mean, come on. Now, the one thing that I do agree with, which is really unfortunate, was what Tyler Boyd said. He's actually one of my fantasy wide receivers that I sent on the bench because I don't like to play anybody we're playing against, which maybe that's good or bad for fantasy, but that's how I work it. He said, and I'll quote, For a team to lay down like that before the game is over, they portrayed it to the whole nation on TV how they gave up. And we did. The whole nation. We just gave up. We didn't throw it forward when we were down in the end zone. Three drops at the very end of the game. And if you can see it from the other side of the field, how how can they not think that we don't see it? So something needs to get fixed and fixed fast because two things. Ben, I don't think, came back for this. I don't think the Steelers wanted him back for this, and I just don't see this being in the short window that we have to get back to the Super Bowl before we enlist another quarterback that is a rookie before Ben retires. That We've got a very small window, and this is not how we need, we need to play. And so the, the WTF continues. So let's switch games here. So you have to go back and find this clip. This is really just hilarious. So in the Jacksonville game, there was a fair catch called and there was obviously a block in the back or something happened is because a penalty flag was thrown, but the penalty flag (laughs) didn't hit the ground. It actually hit the ball and the ball ricocheted away from the player who called it a fair catch. So what happens with that? It's part of the play. It's kind of like in baseball, if the ball that's batted hits the the umpire that's out there looking at the bases, it's part of the play. It happens all the time. So I try to follow up on this to figure out what, you know, what the football happens there. And I, I haven't found it yet, but I will get back to you on that for next week. But that was crazy. So now I'm going to basically rant a couple minutes because it's one thing for the Steelers to play the way they did and then have to deal with the fact that yes, the refs sucked, but you know what? We were playing terrible. So it didn't really matter what the refs did, but let's go to another game that affects what our standings are. And let's talk about the Ravens game and they were playing the Detroit lions. So the refs cheated. There's no other way to put it. They did not call a delay of game. And that would have been a five yard penalty against the Ravens. There was no time left on the play clock. We're sitting there yelling, delay of game, delay of game. We must have counted three seconds. And the officiant, it was quiet. I can't even believe the Lions didn't scream and yell on this. But it was just an embarrassing day for the NFL. Because then Detroit was up by one and Justin Tucker was sent in for a 66-yard field goal. It actually hit the bottom bar of the uprights and happened to bounce in. But if that ended up being a 71 yard, he would not have made it. Who makes 71 yards? Now, maybe he would have, maybe he wouldn't. But let's just say in all, you know, in all actuality, he probably wouldn't have, even though he is the best kicker in football. The fact that they didn't call it is you have one job. That is your job to look at the clock and then to realize that they had no timeouts and that the play clock has expired. So, and he's actually, Lamar Jackson actually always gets delay of games. So it's not even that he, if this is the first time would ever happen to him and why would they think that? He does it all the time. So that just, oh my gosh, you want to talk about what the football was very heated on that. And it's not just me, everyone, just so you know, I'm not just sour grapes or ranting on this. 
They were saying it on the uh, the announcers are saying that oh NFL missed that. They said it on Good Morning Football. They're like, yeah, that was at least two to three seconds more. They even came out and on my you know some of the um, they have on different networks where they have the retired uh, referees. They're like, oh yeah, that was absolutely delay of game. So what can you do? Can you go back and basically say? or protesting, you know, their win. No, basically like, okay, we'll learn from next time. Oh, that's a bunch of crap. It's ridiculous. So the next game, Chiefs lost 24 to 30. Let me, let me rephrase that. The Chiefs lost 24 to 30 versus the um, LA. To see the Chiefs lose was kind of interesting because all the pundits want to say is, oh, well, and all the talking heads, oh, well, it's the Chiefs, they'll get it back. But when the Steelers lose, oh my God, they're they're done. They're done for the season, it's over. So just remember, we're in the same boat with them. So that they've, they've lost two as well. But rookie quarterback, Justin Herbert, definitely had a good day. And also we do want to extend any kind of thoughts and prayers to Andy Reid, the coach of the Chiefs, who left the game um, for feeling ill and went to the hospital. He's been released and he's okay now, but we just want to make sure Andy Reid's a great coach and we, we never want anything to happen to a coach. So let's switch to the Tom Brady team. What is that? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He lost to the Rams. Now, Matthew Stafford, who is one of my fantasy quarterbacks, he is playing phenomenal since he switched teams from the Detroit Lions to now under Sean McVay in Los Angeles, and he's doing great. And so now he is 3-0. and Tom Brady is 2-1. and And speaking of Tom Brady... <laughs> Tom Brady returns to New England for the biggest game of the year and the stakes have never been higher at my bookie. Whether you're backing the Bucks or Pats this Sunday, the game is always more exciting when you've got money on it at my bookie. Get in on the action and take this game to a whole new level at mybookie.com. Both teams are sporting top defenses and nobody knows each other better than Brady and Belichick. So slow and steady will win this race. Smart money bets the under. Don't wait around. Join my bookie now and bet on the biggest game of the season. Use my promo code Steel City and double your first deposit. Again, that's promo code Steel City to get double your first deposit with mybookie.com and start your winning season today. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Okay, so that is so basically Chiefs lost, so Mahomes, Tom Brady lost. Um, we lost. So we're, you know, we're in good company, you know, so it was not a good day for, for a lot of the, um, the teams that were expected to win. But also when we were looking at, you know, let's, let's look now at the San Francisco game, which was Green Bay versus San Francisco. You know, the roughing the passer call in the San Francisco game, it absolutely wasn't. It was a bare, bare touch in that game. And it was actually um, against Garofalo. So I was actually Garofalo. So it was actually kind of uh, interesting to see that. He wasn't even pushed down. But, you know, they wanted to give him some extra time, apparently. But then what happens? You give Aaron Rodgers, you give, you know, retired Drew Brees, you give Tom Brady, you even give Ben. You give them 30 seconds to get in field goal range. That's an issue. And the Green Bay Packers came back to win 30-28. Um, they win. And then one of the things that was a WTF nauseating moment for me was that Aaron Rodgers was then at the podium post game telling everyone why he's so great. Somebody asked him, you know, what makes you special? And he goes, well, I have the intangibles. I this, I that. Ugh, you know what? Ugh, I, I'm, I'm over it. So here's a good WTF in the uh, Monday night football game. So one of the Cowboys defensive linemen tried to bribe a drug tester for a COVID card and he had missed his test, missed his drug tests. And so he was suspended five games for, for uh, what is that a federal offense or is it just for conduct unbecoming? But people stop trying to do that. It's going to get you into trouble. Watching Monday Night Football with Peyton and Eli Manning on ESPN2 is pretty funny. If you ever get a chance to do that, the first half is better than the second. The second kind of wanes on you and you go back to the regular ESPN to see the game. But the guys at the Monday Night Football are so kind of awful anyway. It's just funny to get Peyton and Eli's take on that. And they are hilarious. Play-by-play -play cri and critiques and funny guests. Talk football. Watch the. It's like watching the game with them and joking around it. It is pretty funny. And I was surprised because I actually bet on the game last night and it was, um, they were, Dallas was favored by three and a half. I did bet on them to win um, over Philly and the over was 51 and a half and I took it. I figured it would be a high scoring game with uh, Jalen Hurts and, and also with Dak 
And uh, I won that too. So I was pretty excited. I won about $110 last night on that game. So with the, a two team parlay. So make sure that again, you're getting with my bookie for your bets and, and other platforms uh, to um, get your bets in and, and hopefully make yourself some money this season. So everyone, that's it for me. What a WTF week. I can't wait to come back in a winning week. But guess where we go next? We are yes, we are going into Green Bay against a very arrogant Aaron Rodgers team. We are going to be at Green Bay, and this will be interesting. It's one of the later games, so here in California, it'll be at 125, 425 for those of you in Pittsburgh. So it looks like it's a CBS game. I'm sure it's going to be a game of the week, probably because the Packers are playing. And uh, let's just hope that we can have a, a decent showing, because I'd rather have the WTF around the league and ours be positive instead of all this nonsense here. So anyway, everyone, make it a great day and a great week. And we'll talk to you next time on the Steel City Underground Podcast. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com.